Hello, welcome to Legal Awareness Web Series. We are doing constitutional series and since there has been quite a demand from uh, English knowing people to have a series in English. So today we are going to discuss the whole idea of reasonable classification in the context of debate on citizenship amendment bill. This is the crux and the central argument uh, that whether the new amendment passes the test of reasonable classification under article 14 or it does not pass this test. Those who are writing civil services examination, judicial services examination or even CLAT uh, may pay little more attention because uh, of course in CLAT we are not going to ask questions on law but it will help them uh, in understanding the principle uh, of right to equality under Indian constitution. Now, first of all, let me say that Article 14, which is at the center of this debate on Citizenship Amendment Bill, is applicable to citizens as well as non-citizens. So, even a person who is an alien or a foreigner in India is entitled to right to equality under Article 14 because the expression used under Article 14 is any person. So, Every person, any person will have a right to equality before law and equal protection of laws. Now the first expression equality before law has been borrowed from the British idea of rule of law. And equal protection of laws has been borrowed from the 14th amendment of United States constitution. It is impossible to think that there will be something which is violation of equality before law and not violation of equal protection of laws and that's why these expressions are used synonymously. But there is a difference between the two. Equality before law is a negative concept which means that there shall be absence of any special privileges for anyone and equal protection of laws is a positive concept which means that it is a positive right and the state has to ensure that everyone gets benefit of uh, its laws in an equal way. When we are using word equality before law, here word law is used in the generic sense, in the philosophical sense, it is talking of normative laws. But when we are talking of equal protection of laws, it is talking of law in the sense of specific laws. So citizenship amendment bill is that special law and therefore equal protection of laws is in question. Whether people who have come from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan and they are Muslims are entitled to equal protection of laws with the new amendment, the answer seems to be no. And these people under our law are very much entitled to challenge this amendment in the Supreme Court. Now, our law does accept that God has not created all of us equal. So there are some people who are tall and there are some people who are short, there are some people who are fat and there are some people who are thin, there are some people uh, who have uh, a lot of hairs, there are others who don't have hairs. So since God has not created everyone equal and no two human beings are equal, the demand from legal system is not this that they come up with one law for everyone. In fact, the political parties and the ideological groups which talk of one law, one language, one religion are not fully understanding the demands of our constitution. Our constitution talks of pluralism, our constitution does permit classification. So there can be laws for different groups and to that extent, uh, Mr. Amit Shah, our Honorable Home Minister is right that universality of law, that one law should apply to everyone is not the demand of Article 14. Nevertheless, since Article 14 has been borrowed from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948 and India was one of the original party to UDHR, it says that every human being must be entitled to some inalienable, indivisible rights and right to citizenship 
will be that fundamental right which is to be guaranteed to every human being by virtue of his human nature, by virtue of his character as he, she or the third person. So since citizenship is right to rights, it cannot be denied in the name of differences of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth, etc. etc. After all, if you look at the Hindu uh, culture, we believe that all men and women are sons and daughters of God. We also believe that everyone, even if you take the Christianity or Islam, we believe each one of us is Abd. All of us are creations of God. And since we are creations of God, we are entitled to some basic rights, including right of citizenship. Kantian concept is also this that we all have equal worth as human beings and therefore we must be equally treated. Ronald Daurkin will go a step ahead and will say we are, are entitled to equal respect and concern and therefore this article 14 assumes added importance in our today's context because it seems that article 14 is violated by the new proposal, new legislative proposal, which exclude uh, people who follow certain religions, Judaism and Islam. In Kedarnath Bajoria versus the state of West Bengal, which is a 1953 judgment of the Supreme Court, Supreme Court said that the equal protection of laws guaranteed by Article 14 of the Constitution does not mean that all the laws must be in general character and universal in application and that the state is no longer to have the power of distinguishing and classifying persons or things for the purposes of legislation. Therefore, the Home Minister is absolutely right that the government of India is entitled to make classification. The government is in, of India is entitled to make differences and come up with different laws. The only problem is that here is a political party which has been saying we do not recognize differences and there has to be one law for everyone. And therefore they are going against their own uh, stated position. So differentiation and classification is permissible under Article 14. But such classification has to satisfy three tests. It must be reasonable classification. It must have a rational object to achieve to which Supreme Court has said that it must have a just object to achieve. Here it is very clear that we have sympathies with certain religious groups and we have antipathy with other religious groups. Such kind of therefore distinction is not a just ju distinction. And then the Supreme Court has also added the concept of arbitrariness. And it says that any law which is arbitrary violates right to equality. If we believe, as Hitler for instance believed, that Nazis are superior race and entitled to superior rights, then that is negation of our constitutional values and the fundamental tenets of our constitution. If we believe Aryans have a superior right, that is the negation of constitutional values. If we believe people of followers of uh, in, uh, religions which originated in India deserve a superior deal and people who follow Abrahamic religions, of course Christianity has been included uh, in this, but Judaism and Islam have been excluded, then we are going against the constitutional vision and this vision of the constitution has been incorporated in the preamble in the form of justice social economic and political in the form of liberty of thought belief faith and worship and in the form of equality of status and of opportunity we cannot deny equality of opportunity to people who follow xy religion just because the countries from which they come have majority uh, from that religious community. So I am not saying and Home Minister is right that a valid classification does not require mathematical nicety and a perfect equality nor does it require that everybody must be treated in an identical manner. Scientifically perfect and logically complete classification is not the demand of Article 14. And therefore, it is not open and shut case 
there will be quite a debate in Supreme Court when the petition is filed against CAB and the government will start with a very sound and comfortable position because there is a presumption of constitutionality of laws. So if a law is passed by the parliament, Supreme Court will presume that this law is constitutional and anyone who challenges it will have the burden to prove that this law is arbitrary or uh, the classification is not reasonable or it does not have a rational uh, object to achieve and this is quite heavy a burden of course you need not prove it beyond reasonable doubt and by uh, preponderance of evidence if you are able to prove uh, that will be good enough. I give you one example Subramaniam Swami BJP's leading uh, uh, member of parliament he went to the Supreme Court and Supreme Court in 2014 is stuck down a rule section 6a of uh, uh, Delhi Special Police Act, the law provided that if you want to proceed under Prevention of Corruption Act against an officer above the level of Joint Secretary and above, then you will need the sanction of the uh, appointing authority before you initiate prosecution. Now, classification based on seniority looks reasonable. If you are JS or above, then you are in a different scale. You have put in a uh, uh, different number of years into service. But the Supreme Court in Subramaniam Swami case said that this classification is not a reasonable classification uh, and struck down this rule. Even Article 14 permits that there can be a law what to say for a group, but even one individual, if that individual constitutes a class uh, in himself. But the validity of any law is to be judged by assessing its overall effect and not by picking up exceptional cases. What the court has to see is whether after taking all aspects into consideration, the classification is just. This was the judgment in Muhammad Usman versus State of Andhra Pradesh 1971 judgment of the Supreme Court. Therefore, when you look at entire aspect of CAB, it is absolutely clear that we want to say no to people who follow a certain religion and that is a palpable kind of arbitrariness and it is not right. Moreover, Article 14 cannot be invoked if you have done an illegal act. Now, illegal migrants, as they stand today, are in violation of Foreigners Act. They have come to our country without valid documents. Now we are trying to help them. But when we are trying to help them, we cannot do cherry picking, that we pick up X, Y, Z and we leave uh, uh, A, B, C. Similarly, in P. Rajendran versus the state of Madras, a 1968 judgment, the state medical seats were to be distributed according to districts. If you have more population, you will get more seats. If you have less population, you will get less seats. Now, this classification will look absolutely reasonable that even for parliament, we have seats in parliament for Lok Sabha depending upon the population of uh, uh, state. So, UP sends 80 seats because UP has the highest population in the country. But here, Supreme Court said this classification of seats based on population of districts has no rational uh, object to achieve because the object to achieve in admission is to select the best candidate for medical and therefore they struck down uh, this classification. Similarly in CAB the rational object should be that if people are persecuted in their countries and they want to take refuge in India we must make them eligible for our citizenship. Whether their religion is X or their religion is Y is as irrelevant as this uh, distribution of seats uh, based on, on districts. Moreover, in Chitra Ghosh versus Union of India, another 1969 judgment of the Supreme Court, Supreme Court has said explicitly that any classification based on language, religion, race, sex or place of birth is not reasonable classification. 
and therefore this classification which is based on religion must fall. Similarly, in John Velemetten versus Union of India 2003 judgment, which was about the Christian's right to make a will under section 118 of Indian Succession Act, a Christian could make a valid will for a religious or charitable purposes only 12 months before his death. Now this classification Supreme Court said is not a reasonable classification. It does not have a rational object to achieve and they stuck it down. If we think that the citizenship amendment bill is valid, we are falling in a very serious trap because then now Muslims will say that since you consider it as a class in ourselves, we are entitled to a different kind of law and the entire Muslim personal law will then be protected. You will not be able to enact a uniform civil code because you yourself treat them as a different class and law for a different class can be different. Moreover, I personally feel that citizenship amendment bill goes against our stated position on citizenship. We did not say that we will give citizenship only on the basis of religion. We are putting a uh, cutoff date of 31st December 2014. From where we get this confidence? That from 1st of January 2020, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh will not ill-treat their minorities will be very fair to their minorities. I think this is absurd. This cutoff date, a particular cutoff date, that we will accept people for our citizenship only if they have entered before 31st December 2014 is wrong because there are people who will be discriminated, who had been discriminated after that date and who will be discriminated in future. Similarly, we are also going against the Assam Accord and finally, by saying that if you come to XYZ districts or XYZ states in Northeast, you will not be given citizenship. If our object is that if you are persecuted, you will get our citizenship, how does that object change if these people have gone into these states? I feel personally that this is quite a case which will be argued well and the whole world will observe how our Supreme Court eventually decides this case. Similarly, I think we must also take into account that if somewhere in the back of our mind we think that with CAB some 5 crore or 10 crore uh, Indian Muslims are uh, going to be deported or they will not find their names in NRC, then we are living in fool's paradise. The number of Muslims who have come from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan is negligible. In fact, I have been saying it in the context of Assam NRC that why will Muslims from a Muslim majority Bangladesh come into India? But in the context of Bangladeshi illegal migrants, we have used all kinds of adjectives. Now we are going against our own position. Let me say that Indian Muslims in 1947, out of their own free will, rightly and legitimately rejected two-nation theory of Jinnah and preferred to stay back in India. They have not gone to Pakistan and they have not come back to India from Pakistan. In fact, the number of people who had gone to Pakistan and come back was very small, about 3,000. It was discussed in the Constituent Assembly and they came here under the uh, permanent settlement, permit of permanent settlement. Thereafter, there hasn't been uh, any migration uh, on a large scale. Therefore, this law is not going to drastically reduce the number of Muslims in India. Most of Indian Muslims are Indian citizens by birth or because of the birth of their parents in India who prefer to stay back in India. Therefore, we are not going to even achieve our objective if we want to uh, disenfranchise or, you know, uh, take away citizenship of 5 crore or 10 crore Muslims, even that objective will not be uh, fully served. 
if the name of Muslims will not come in the national NRC, it will not be because they migrated from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. No, their name will not come because of some discrepancy in the document. In some, their name is written MD dot. In others, it is written MOHD dot. In other, it is written uh, MU uh, double H A M A D etc. So there will be some discrepancy in the document, either in their name or in their parents' name, which will be the cause of their exclusion from NRC. But almost 99.5 percent Muslims in India are the one who are Indian nationals, whose parents were Indian nationals, whose grandparents were Indian nationals and therefore even this objective we are doing some rhetoric. That rhetoric will again fall and it has fallen in Assam. We said that we have uh, 10 uh, uh, million people, 5 million people and at the end of final NRC we find that you have about 1.9 million people. And out of these 1.9 pe million people, majority are not Muslims, but not Muslims. What has happened in Assam will happen with Citizenship Amendment Bill and with NRC and it is not going to drastically reduce the Muslim citizens number in India. If you like Legal Awareness web series, I would request you to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. I would I request you to kindly subscribe us and disseminate uh, and share this uh, video widely. We have also created a, 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 a what's, uh, we have also created an app. It is named Fazan Mustafa, which is available in uh, Google App Store. I am also put, giving you the number. If you are in India, kindly send, give us a missed call, and we will uh, forward you the link. Thank you very much.